What's going on guys, Dan Watson, LearningCameras.com, and I've got the brand new NX1. So I wanted to give you some of my first opinions from using this camera for a couple of days. Once again, the full review is coming up, and we'll also have some information at LearningCameras.com so you can keep up with us there. We also have some pre-order links, uh, or some order links in the uh, description below and on LearningCameras.com if you'd like to purchase this camera, we appreciate you using those links. So, but let's take a look at this camera, some of the things that it is, some of the things that it isn't. 1500 bucks. This is a great price for a stunning new body from Samsung. You do have a weather sealed body. I'm using this with the 16 to 50 millimeter f2 to f2.8 lens, which is almost a reason enough to buy this camera is this lens. And uh, a couple things with it. Overall, when you pick this thing up, extremely well built, very satisfied with the build quality that you're going to get from that weather sealed body. Um, some of the other differences, you know, it does feel a little bit Nikon on the DSLRs with, with your dials up top in here. It's not my favorite place to put it just because it's a little more difficult to feel your way around from where you normally hold your camera than where Canon does it, for example, which is up here. So, you know, it's a little harder to get those if you're shooting photos. However, shooting video, normally your eyes away from it anyway. You do have a nice um, electronic viewfinder, which is pretty cool. It's not my favorite that I've seen, but it's still very good. And uh, overall, as we work our way around the body, we do have all the ports we would think we would need on this one. It does have USB 3.0, which is very interesting. Headphone mic input. However, for those of you using this for video recording, I will say that the mic input is currently not adjustable while shooting video. And that is huge for me. I actually have to go into the menu settings. So uh, Samsung needs to change that right now because I can't believe that on a camera they're pushing video this much. As of now, I can't find any way of controlling the volume while recording or any shortcut menus uh, while video recording. And that kind of leads me to some of this camera. You know, spec-wise, image quality-wise, this camera looks like it's gonna produce some excellent quality images. Once again, stay tuned to the full review for my judgment on that after really getting to put it through its paces on the image quality side. However, uh, when it comes to features, it's got a lot of control. It has plenty of buttons on there. However, the customization is not quite what we'd see on something like a GH4 or a Sony a7S, especially for video shooters there. So don't expect quite that level. And, you know, Samsung had really kind of built itself up to be competitive with that market. I don't think that this camera is quite there. Now, it does use H.265 which could be an issue for video recording because that format is very, very tough to be able to play back. Um, I do have a new computer coming in with a, a 900 series NVIDIA graphics card. That is supposed to have preliminary support for that kind of file. So we'll see if that actually plays it back. Uh, I won't have that for another week or two though. So we'll have to wait to see if that does it or not. Otherwise, you're gonna be transcoding those files. So some limitations when it comes to that. You only have one SD card slot, um, however, this kind of feels a little bit more cell phone-ish and even a little bit more uh, kind of computer than most of my other DSLR cameras in that you can store things in the camera, you can store up to, photo, uh, up to 40 custom modes, and then you only get two on the dial, but you can pick and choose which ones you want to recall at any point in time. So you can store 40, and then when you get to the location, say, okay, let me recall that section. So that's not too bad. We can get those custom modes. Also, you can shoot like panoramics and stuff like that on here. It does the stitching right away. So you're getting a lot of that computer processing power that you would see on a cell phone on a camera like this, which is kind of interesting. Um, going through the menus, I will say, I don't know if you can see that or not, but everything is extremely smooth when you're doing touch screen. More what we're used to on a phone, and I have touch screen on my Canon 70D that I'm using to record this with, and it does not work like that. So I still find myself using the physical controls, but on this camera, uh, just navigating through the menus and using a touch screen is extremely easy extremely uh, well it's kind of Samsung so you're used to it on your cell phones you're used to it on on your other devices that Samsung makes so uh, they do use that extremely well and you know basically overall I have used a Wi-Fi on it I will say that's a nice feature NFC uh, right to your phone it has that although you do have that with the cameras like the Sony a7s and the GH4 the GH4 implements it a little bit better than the Sony a7s but uh, this is going to be very good for that so um, I mean, overall, I would say there are some limitations that are a little disappointing, such things like uh, being able to control the audio while recording. Having a lot of options available at your disposal while recording 
it just doesn't have that. You do have the focus assist, but a lot of them are only available while in preview mode and not available while uh, shooting a movie. So we kind of lose a lot of that capability as soon as we hit the record button. You can uh, output HDMI 4K. So if you don't like that H.265 recording format, you could go out to an external recorder to be able to record that in something like ProRes. Um, the nice thing is you can use that with a lot <laughs> more inexpensive SD cards. So I do have a UA, I think it's a UH3, but I do have a new SanDisk card that I'm using for this one. So it is higher speed, but you can use virtually any class 10 card in this, which is gonna be nice. So, you know, once again, stay tuned to the full review. It's question time. You know, if you have any questions, leave them in here. That's gonna give me some time to, to check on those features while I have this camera and also update those in the full review. So please let me know your thoughts, what you're interested in. I know a ton of people are looking at this for, for video as well as photos. So um, as a hybrid camera, this is really why I was looking at this camera is because it seems like it might be a little bit better as a hybrid camera than something like a GH4 and, uh, and maybe even a little bit better in some ways than the Sony a7S. So just because you get that 28 megapixel um, image sensor on there, which could be awesome depending on what you're shooting. So once again, full review coming up. Check out the details, learningcameras.com. Links below in the description. And thanks for watching and stay tuned.